We do this program several times a week to find out exactly what's coming up. Go to biseniorcenter.org backslash calendar. And if I'm doing my job, you'll have previews of uh, topics that are coming up to uh, look at. We are grateful to uh, Fieldstone Memory Care and Fieldstone Communities on Bainbridge Island for sponsoring these programs. Fieldstone offers innovative and compassionate care on Rolling Bay, and they are now offering day stay and respite programs. To learn more or get a tour, call 360-689-4314. And it is the first Wednesday of the month, which means that John Chan is here to do a little tech talk. And today, I think we're starting with printers and scanners, right, John? Yep. That's great. Let's talk about what would you want to consider when you're looking at a printer? One, black and white images versus a color image. And <clears throat> you, you need, need to think about what you're going to print. If I know a lot of people who would, let's say they see an ad on the internet and that they decide to print it so they can take it to the store and they would print it in color. Now, there's no reason for you to print that in color. You can print it in black and white just as easily. And any kind of color images, when you print it on black and white, it will just show shades of gray. Black will be black. Uh, red or yellow may come out very, very light shade of gray. All right. And so, <clears throat> and by the way, black ink is cheaper than color ink. So I'm going to cover that a little bit uh, on consumable products. Um, okay. <clears throat> you need to think about what you're going to print. Are you mostly going to print, let's say you're writing a book and you're printing out pages of that book, or you're, you see an article on, on news or somebody sends you an article, you want to print that article for so you can have it on a piece of paper while, while walking around. Um, or do you want to print photos. And photo is a totally separate category, and we're, I'm going to leave that until the last. All right. um, <clears throat> once you print it, what are you going to do with that piece of paper? You're going to use it for the next few days, show it to people or yourself, uh, and then you're going to throw it away? Or do you want to keep it for longevity, and you want to take that image and stick it on your refrigerator and it's going to sit there for weeks and months that will also make a difference also a lot of times inkjet especially with ink in fact it's always with inkjet you print an image and if your hands is wet fingers are wet and you touch that image that image will smear especially with color, All right. So <clears throat> uh, if you're gonna print a picture and it's in color and you hand that picture to somebody and somebody picks it up with their wet finger, that image may smear. Now, different printer companies, they are making, uh, producing ink that is more and more uh, resistant to, to um, smearing, uh, they're getting a lot better, but they still have to, uh, they may cost a little bit more, but it's up to you on how important that is. Um, <clears throat> also, a lot of ink will fade in the sun. Right? So if you print a picture and you stick it on the refrigerator and the refrigerator is always in the sun or gets a lot of sunlight, that picture is going to fade. And as I said, I'm going to talk about pictures a little bit later. Um, also with inkjet, 
you may have to wait for a little bit for it to dry before you touch it. Now, usually by the time that piece of paper comes out of that printer, most of the ink are fast drying. So by the time it comes out of that printer, sits on the output tray, it's usually dry. Right? But it really depends on what kind of printer that you have. And <clears throat> um, now, both the laser and the inkjet, you can get another option. And usually is not very expensive which is the top of the printer actually flips up and there's a sheet of glass and you can put an image on that glass and use it like a photocopier. And the printer will actually have a button on the front that says copy. Right? So you can just, without going to the local store, you can make, create extra copies. Um, <clears throat> A number of uh, office jet, um, they also have a fax feature. So if you want to fax something to another person, you can take that image, that piece of paper, put it on the flat glass, and, the, and it will scan that sheet of paper and send it to another place. Now, these days, you sort of, don't see too many people faxing things anymore. You usually just take a uh, uh, scan that picture and that picture will end up, not when I say picture, it will scan it and store it on your computer. Then you can send that to someone else use, uh, using email. Um, but sometimes, yes. So I'm wondering, is, is there, are those the ones that are called all-in-one printers? They're usually called all-in-one printers, which means they can print, they can scan, they can fax. Uh, copy. Copy. And, <clears throat> okay. Um, something else you need to think about when you have a scanner is what are you going to scan? How much are you going to scan? If you're scanning one sheet of paper once in a while or two, three sheets of paper once in a while, you can just lift up the glass, put a new, new uh, <clears throat> document in it and scan it. Or are you going to have stacks of stuff that you want to scan All right. to swap each sheet of paper one at a time it becomes sort of a pain. So there's something called the ADF or automatic document feeder. So it's kind of like when you're going to an office supply store and you take a whole, uh, in April, you take all of your tax uh, related stuff, stick it on that printer and it will just suck it in one at a time, scan it and produce a stack copy. So, that's an extra option, and it's going to cost you a little bit more. Um, also, how fast do you want that thing to print? Now, bear in mind, usually the very first page is always slower than rest of the pages. Right? The first page may take five, six seconds to create, and subsequent pages or take less than a second or one or two seconds to print. Does that really matter to you? If it doesn't, you can get a uh, pay less money and get one that doesn't print as fast. And if you're only going to be print one or two or four or five pages at a time, it doesn't make a lot of difference. But if you're going to printing a lot of uh, documents, then you may want to look at the speed, printing speed. Um, <clears throat> some printers will print on one side of the paper. So like one side of the paper. Some other printers will print duplex and it will print front and back. Other printers says it can print duplex, but you have to flip the paper. 
So that's really a manual printer. So when the paper comes out, you flip it and stick it back in. Now, when I do that, it always flips the wrong way. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Usually, whenever I, I I have to do whenever I get a new printer, I will experiment and waste a lot of paper, and I'll experiment. Okay, this is my side one. I stick it in, and how does it come out? And on duplexing, there are different way of duplexing. One of them is the printer will print page uh, one, three, five, seven on four sheets of paper. Then you, it will then print two, four, six, eight, meaning the backside. So every printer is a little bit different. But if you see the word duplex, it means it will print on front and back. It may be totally automatic, or you may have to help it along. Okay. <clears throat> um, now let's talk about supplies. Inkjet uses a little cartridge of ink, and it's liquid. The disadvantage with ink is that it dries out. All right, it has a little 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 spigot that spits ink out a little hole. And if you don't use that printer for, let's say, a couple of weeks, that tip of that jet may dry out. And now if you use a color, a color let's say you're printing color, there's black and there are three other colors which is blue, um, it, it's called usually in, in printer technology, it's called cyan or yellow, uh, magenta. Those are the three basic colors, which is really blue, yellow, and red. And then there is black. Now, <clears throat> so you have four little jets that's gonna spit out ink onto a piece of paper. If any of them gets clogged, then you get streaks on your page. Or if you're printing something in color and one of the color jet is plugged up, then your whole picture color is off. Maybe the blue is clogged up, so your picture isn't gonna have any blue on it. Okay. So the, um, the way to circumvent that is always to make sure you keep using that printer maybe once a week right you, even if you don't have anything to print you can tell the printer to print a kind of kind of a, a test sheet and if you're not doing anything just hit that and it'll print a test sheet which will use all the colors You'll clear the jet. And <clears throat> some people have asked me, should I leave that printer on 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Two school of thought. If you leave it on, it's going to use a little electricity. Yes, but it's very, very small amount. If you decide to shut it off when you don't use it, true, it's not going to use electricity, but Every time you turn it on, the printer will go into a mode to clean the heads. All right. So when you first turn it on, you'll hear that printer going, making a lot of noises. It will go back and forth. And also inside of that printer, there's a, a fiber mat that actually rubs on top of the ink the ink jets to clean it off. So if you turn the machine on twice or five times a day, it's gonna do that cleaning five times a day. So after a while, you're gonna use up a lot of ink just for the printer to clean the heads, all right? If you leave the printer on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, <clears throat> the disadvantage with that is every, every once in a while, <clears throat> in the middle of the night, the printer will go into a cleaning cycle. 
but that doesn't last long. So <clears throat> you'll save ink and you'll be able, <clears throat> but you still have to clean your heads, like maybe print something once a week. Uh, when you are looking at how much it costs to print something, and you see on the box of a printer that says each cartridge will be able to print so many pages. Just remember that the manufacturer or the in printing industry is only calculating that based on 5% page coverage, right. meaning one page, only 5% of that page is going to get covered with ink. And that's sort of a one third of a page double spaced. So here I have a page. So imagine if you have this much of a page that's double spaced, that is what the manufacturer says, how many pages this ink cartridge will print. So if you're constantly printing a whole page of stuff, right, you're going to get less pages per cartridge than what the box says. <clears throat> All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. So, um, with ink cartridges, and depends on manufacturer, they do it all different ways. <clears throat> they usually have one cartridge containing black, which is usually what, mo what most people will print most often. And it's a, it's a larger cartridge. Then there are three other colors blue, yellow, and red, or cyan, yellow, magenta. Those other three colors, depending on how they package the printer, the three of them may be in the same container with little compartments. One little compartment for one color, another one, another one. The, it's a little bit cheaper, but the disadvantage with that kind of cartridge is if one of the ink cartridge is stuck or one of the ink you ran out, let's say you print something with a lot of blue in it and the blue goes empty, now your printer isn't going to print anything. It's saying you have to replace that cartridge, the entire cartridge, even though you may have a lot of ink in the other two compartments. So another way to buy it is the printer may have four different cartridges, one black and one for each color. So if you run out of blue, you just take the blue, chuck it and replace the blue. Okay. They're now coming out with printers. They have a lot of it's a big compartment. And when they sell you the printers, they also sell you a little squeeze bottle of the color that you can refill yourself. All right. Some other <clears throat> printer manufacturer will say, okay, the manufacturer will monitor how much ink you have. When you start to run out, it will send you a new one in the mail you pay for it, okay? So, <clears throat> and yes, you can also take the empty cartridge to certain stores and they can refill it for you. Not too many people would do that. I mean, not, many too, not too many stores would do that. And when they do do it, it's only for certain manufacturer cartridges. So, <clears throat> Uh, in other words, they don't fill cartridges for every manufacturer. 
And, but you also have to remember that cartridge contain a little jet that's going eventually going to clog. All right. So is it better to uh, <clears throat> replace the whole cartridge or get a cartridge ink refill? Right. That's really based on how you're going to use your printer and what you print. Uh, I'm seeing a, a number of printers out there that is supposedly a lot better in terms of clogged jets. And it's, there are just too many different variations uh, for me to pick out and says, okay, this is better than that one. Um, <clears throat> some of the things that you can save money. One of the best way to save money is you can say, I want to print something in ink saver mode. Right. And if it's uh, inkjet, uh, I'm not sure usually what they call it. Um, let's see. Some, some says, some will say ink saver or toner shit saver. Some of the other will say draft mode. What it does is it will, instead of printing all the little dots that makes up a character, you'll print every other dot. Right. When you're looking at a draft of something, you could care less if it has all the dots, as long as you can read it. But if you want to send a formal letter to someone, you may want all the dots. Right. So printing it in draft mode will save you ink. Another way to <clears throat> save on ink is, I know, I know it has happened to me that if I just, let's say I'm printing an airline ticket on a paper and it will print the airline ticket and then it will have a couple of extra lines, kind of like advertising or says, this is American Airlines, blah, blah, blah. And it will print that on a new piece of paper. And that's the only thing it prints on that new piece of paper. All right. So I'm wasting paper. So best thing to do when you before you actually print something, you go into <clears throat> a preview mode, meaning your thought your computer will show you what it will look like on a piece of paper. Very often, I'll see, uh, I have a typing error, or maybe my formatting of something is screwy, so I won't bother to print it. I'll go fix it and then print it. Or sometimes I'll get a bank statement, and I only need page three and four. I don't need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can pick only the pages I want to print. That's going to save you ink. That's also going to save you paper. Um, <clears throat> another way to save money when you're printing. Oh, by the way, I got to tell you a story. <clears throat> um, I have a friend who would try to save paper. So he'll print things on a piece of paper. And he won't throw that paper away. And next time, he will use the backside for something else. All right. And that's great. He's using a single piece of paper twice. And by the way, one piece of paper is on the average, I would say, probably a couple cents a sheet of paper. All right. And... Now, depending on the quality and the thickness of the paper, you may be paying more. But on average, it's um, not a new, let's see. Yeah, it's usually maybe around somewhere around a couple of sheets of one piece. Did I, did I write that down someplace? Uh, well, I see that a lot of the printers have a price per 
page based on their estimate of what the ink's going to cost. But you're saying the paper itself is going to cost a couple cents. Right. And, oh, yeah, here it is. Um, one ream of paper, which is about 500, which is not about, it is 500 sheets. That's 20 pound stock. And usually there are somewhere around five bucks, or maybe you can get a little bit cheaper. So 500 sheets for $5 about, which comes up to be about a penny a sheet or sometimes two cents a sheet. It can be as high as 10 cents a sheet, depending on the thickness of the paper, the design of the paper, if any. And <clears throat> so, um, okay. So anyway, this friend of mine, he will save paper by using each piece of paper twice. But he was printing it on a color inkjet. And he was printing ads, not ads, but he was printing um, items that he found at, let's say, Home Depot. He decided to print it. But alongside of the item of what he wanted to print were ads of other things that he could care less about. And he was printing them in color. So he was using a lot of colored ink to save a penny which is a piece of paper. So you have to really think about what you're trying to save and how you're saving it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Oh, <clears throat> sometimes I have received email from friends and they have decided that they're going to use some kind of stationary for the background of that letter to you, right? which may be uh, with uh, shades of flower or different pastel colors. Just remember, if you decide to print that email from your friend, your whole page is going to contain these designs, which is going to use up ink. Right? So you may just want to print it and just pick, just copy the text, the words that you want to print and print them only and not print the background. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay. Uh, for me, a lot of times when I'm printing something, I always print in black and white mode, and I'm always printing in draft mode, right? which saves ink. Another thing that people don't think about is um, font. The actual characters you use to print. And now there are certain fonts that has a serif. Uh, the best way to, to describe serif is, let's say the letter T. Do you ever see the letter T with a little arm on top and a little, and little toe on the bottom? That's using extra ink, all right? So if you have, you have a font, try to look for that same font that says some font sans serif meaning without the little arms and toes. Right, and that's gonna save you, save you money. Um, <clears throat> there is a font called Courier. And then very often people will use Times New Roman or Calibri or uh, a number of others. If you look up in your uh, font selection, if you look at Courier, it's very, very thin lines compared to Times New Roman or Calibri. Calibri is very fat lines. So just by changing what you want to print to 
using a font that uses less ink, you're going to save ink. Okay. I'll just show you these so you can compare what we're talking about. Ah. So you've got Courier, right? Right. New Roman <clears throat> and Calibri. And you'll notice that Calibri is uh, uh, heavier. Times New Roman has serifs on it, meaning little arms and little toes. And Courier is a very skinny line. And so if you can, always use Courier to print something. Right. And you can work on a document that is, if you'd like to look at, let's say, Times New Roman when you are writing something, but before you actually print it, you can switch it to Time uh, Courier and print it that way. Okay, so that's an option. Um, <clears throat> oh. And one item that you, before we get to photos, one way you can save paper and ink, which is printing it something called two up or four up. All right. And which means, again, I have slides all prepped, but this is a piece of paper that is portrait mode. They call it the portrait mode. It's eight, you, <clears throat> eight and a half across, 11 down. And this is landscape. And those are the printing tech, uh, wordings. So portrait or landscape. You can print, the sample I had set up was the senior center's homepage. And you can print one page to a piece of paper, but depends on what you're gonna use that for, you can print something called two up, meaning one page here and a second page here, meaning two pages on one side of a piece of paper. And, and I'll use the right, the right terminology. This, we call this a page. The whole thing, we call it one sheet of paper. All right, so one sheet of paper has a front page and a back page. So a two up meaning printing one here, one here, or print one here and one here. So that's two up, you're gonna use half as much paper, and you're going to use less ink. There's something also called four up, meaning one, two, three, four. Or you can rotate it, one, two, three, four. Now, it get the, all the words get a lot smaller. Imagining one sheet of paper divided into four corners. You can go as high as nine up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I wouldn't want to read something that is nine up. But let's say you are printing seating tags. You, let's say during thank Christmas or Thanksgiving, you're going to have everybody sitting around the table and you want to have a little seating tag for every person. There's nothing wrong with printing person's name. So you can have nine names on a sheet of paper. Not very practical in day to day, but usually I will print two up in a lot of cases. And if I am, let's say, putting my notes together for, for a uh, tech talk session, I may use two up because I don't really need to read it. I just need to refer to it once in a while. Um, just remember you can, when you print multi-page up, you can print it on both sides if your printer can do that. 
So that means you can, on a single sheet of paper, you can put four images that's fairly readable on a single sheet of paper. Okay. That sort of all also goes into um, <clears throat> photos. Um, when you are using a home printer to print it photo on a sheet of paper, you really shouldn't use a standard sheet of paper that you can buy $5 a ring. All right. You need to buy photo paper. Why? Because you most photo paper are much smoother. They have sort of a waxy surface to it. And when you print on it, the color is not going to bleed. On the standard um, for office paper, when you write on it, there are fiber on the surface of the paper, just like if you take a Sharpie and hold it on top of a piece of paper and not lift it off the paper, after a while, the ink will start bleeding, either bleeding sideways on that same sheet or start bleeding through to the underside. And photo paper are always thicker. They are usually a different kind of texture. So a sheet of four by six paper, photo paper, uh, usually maybe they are eight cents a sheet, depending on if you can buy them on sale. Um, <clears throat> if you want, if you want, to print photo on a, let's say, eight by 10, the cost can be somewhere around 20 cents a sheet to 35 cents a sheet. And just remember when you're printing photos, you're gonna use a lot of ink, right? So you're gonna use up ink when you're printing it. <clears throat> so unless you're printing photos just and and remember you need if you need to keep that photo for a while like stick it on the refrigerator you have to make sure it's not going to fade on you so it's not unusual for you to uh, end up costing you maybe 15 cents just to print on a four by six piece of photo paper I did a quick look up. Uh, if you're a member of Costco, a four by six cost 11 cents. And let's see, where else did I look? Uh, I looked up um, Walmart. It cost nine cents for a four by six. And I know that Costco, if you order photos from Costco, they will send it to your home but you're not gonna get it today. And <clears throat> Rite Aid, Walgreen, they all have photo service and they all have different costs. I did not look at the cost of all of them. But just remember that if you do really want a photo and that you're gonna carry it around in your wallet, it's a lot easier and you'll get better results if you just go to a photo place and they have it professionally done using professional ink on a professional paper than printing at home. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, I just did a quick calculation. If you're gonna print at home, uh, a four by six could be around 20 cents to print up to 80 cents, up to three bucks for a four by six. So depending on where you're going to print, you may want to just use a, a professional photo service. Now, <clears throat> how long does a printer last? It can last 10 years. And many times without any having any kind of repairs, 
that printer will last. But as I said, the ink cartridge may be getting more and more expensive or harder to find. Right. Um, I used to buy ink cartridge for a, a certain printer at maybe $20 for three colors. It's now somewhere around $35 for the same thing. Now, <clears throat> also remember that when you buy a new printer, no matter what kind of printer, that printer comes with ink. Maybe and not a full cartridge worth, but it comes with ink. And so depending on how much you print, it may last you a while. And I've known people who will go out and buy a $80 printer, use it until he runs out of ink, then he'll go out and replace the whole printer. That sort of of waste of equipment. But if you think about it, if three cartridges will cost you somewhere around 30 bucks and plus the black cartridge will cost you, mm, I don't know, maybe about 10, 12, 15 bucks. So a new printer could be the same price as replacing the printer ink twice, okay? But you, you have to do your own calculation on that. Um, <clears throat> if you are not getting good quality prints from an inkjet, meaning a lot of lines, you may want to just get new cartridges and actually spend the money, buy new cartridges for all, your, all, the, all the different colors to see if you, you can get better pricing. I mean, better uh, quality of your print. Um, <clears throat> and I know, Maria, you said you have a seven-year-old printer. Uh, it's an HP Office Jet. And <clears throat> I think unless there is something physically wrong with it, that should last you another couple of three years. I learned a lot today. That was very helpful. Um, I think that uh, I didn't realize the pluses and minuses of uh, lasers and uh, ink. And, um, you know, if I don't use a printer very much, it might be worth the laser because it will just turn on and run. And by the way, uh, the one of my laser, which is a brother laser, I think I bought it for mm, maybe about 100 a hundred bucks uh, back about almost 10 years ago. And it's still printing high quality um, output. And it is also a duplex, meaning you'll print the front and the back. You'll print the first side, suck it back in and print the back side. Right. And, uh, but it is getting harder for me to f buy toner off of Amazon, right? It's getting more expensive. So my wife and I were saying, okay, when we run out of toner, we'll rethink, do we, do we need to re replace it or not? But- Thank you a, so much. I, These are wonderful. Um, we look forward to talking to you about this next, uh, next month. And also thank you for all your help on Mondays at the Senior Center, uh, both in the summer and then next year, uh, we'll have the kids back from Bainbridge Youth Services in September. So.